Battlehawks Panthers, the spread favors St. Louis by six and a half. This total sitting at 42 and a half, same as the last game. And a forecast familiar for St. Louis fans who are also inside, inside Ford Field at Michigan. So this will be the XFL statement game of the weekend when it comes to Birmingham and Arlington being very close and you being able to tell those teams are evenly matched. This is where there's a considerable gap on paper between the Battle Hawks and the Panthers. And really it all starts with AJ McCarron. The the Battle Hawks offense and the Panthers defense could be a pretty good matchup, but Bruce Brat got Brat bleh. We are starting off strong here, Zook. Bruce Gradkowski. That's enough syllables for me tonight. Is back to work with AJ McCarron. And that's really bad news, I think, for the rest of the UFL because you look at St. Louis, their fifth and sixth receivers, I think, could start on the rest of these UFL squads. Uh, it's no surprise. AJ actually said recently that one day he wants to take over the head coaching reins for the St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, so his agenda has got to be clear this year, right? Play so damn good that Anthony Beck is going to get college and NFL looks, and maybe AJ will be able to retire, hop in there, and, and become a head coach. Wouldn't that be something for St. Louis? Uh, yeah, Bruce, Bruce and AJ are going to be co-coordinators this year. For sure. And for my money, this is a team that's going to air it out even more than they did in 2023, which was a lot. Uh, we're taking bets on who's going to emerge as wide receiver one for the Battle Hawks. You got Jacor Pearson out for half the season with a knee injury. So it's really down to Hakeem Butler, Darius Shepard, Marcel Aitman, and Blake Jackson over from Seattle. I think really all those guys are capable of being uh, AJ's favorite target. But Hakeem Butler is the one to me who separates himself from that group. They also add Wayne Gallman, who kind of directly replaces the tailback from last year, Brian Hill. They were both fourth round picks in the NFL, both kind of vet guys who can be utilized in the pass game and can also pick up the, the pass rusher that AJ is going to be facing this year in that pocket. Um, for the offensive line in St. Louis, all XFL, Penn State Nittany Lion, Steven Gonzalez. Got to get him on the show at some point. This year, he's back all XFL to anchor that offensive line. They, they return pretty much everybody. I don't even have to run through the names. That line is very solid. And they'll be tasked with stopping a couple really solid pass rushers from the Michigan Panthers. Breland Speaks is a guy we think about. Kenny Willekes from the home state. He used to play for Sparty. And Frank Inda, the real deal on that Michigan defense. I do think they get a few sacks on Saturday afternoon, but it's just going to be an uphill battle, especially when you consider this is A.J. McCarron going against a first-year defensive coordinator in Colin Bauer for the Panthers. That's You imagine that's your first test. You got that receiving core to deal with and the UFL preseason MVP favorite. So let's switch focus a bit to the Michigan offense. Mike Nolan hired Marcel Belfay away from the Philadelphia Stars to be the OC. Donnie Abraham is the defensive coordinator for the St. Louis Battlehawks. Those are the two coordinators that will be taking each other on Saturday afternoon. Um, fun fact, actually, when it comes to the coaches, uh, the head coaches in this one, Mike Nolan and Anthony Becht, were once together with the New York Jets back in the year 2000. Mike Nolan was the D.C. there. And Anthony Becht was a draft pick, a young tight end. That was a cool tidbit from uh, Stully that we found in those, those awesome St. Louis game notes that, that he delivers every week. Uh, Belfay, the new offensive coordinator here for Michigan, is known for the air raid. So we'll see who they go with at quarterback. You've got the Ivy League EJ Perry and the SEC Danny Etling. Very contrasting styles there. And that's really a toss-up with, with some favoring Etling. Um, as, as, as the, the QB one, again, just another reason I'm going to play St. Louis here. The uncertainty at the quarterback position for Michigan is the last thing you need when you're going against XFL defensive player of the year, Pita Talmo Penu. That's not going to be easy for a two quarterback system. Although Etling does have some wheels. I remember him showing them off in college and also with the green Bay Packers in preseason action. Uh, Wes Hills is the tailback here for Michigan, and he's going to make that offense go. 
He led the USFL in rushing last year. And actually another kid out of Slippery Rock. We're seeing a few Slippery Rock guys coming out to the UFL. St. Q. Sweeting, guys some remember from Vegas last year. Uh, highlighting that Battlehawks defense is Tamo Penu and, of course, Austin Fiolu, who comes over from Seattle. We're actually calling them the Battle Dragons this year, Zook. I mean, I counted eight Seattle Sea Dragons on – the defensive side of the ball for St. Louis. So that that Sea Dragons defense that was headlined by uh, Zook's uncle Ron Zook, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a big Seattle influence. Uh, when you think more about this defense, I, I feel like the trip to the dome last April for Seattle kind of made Anthony Beck open his eyes a little bit, and, and how Seattle was able to shut down AJ McCarron that day. What did he do? He went out and got all those guys on his side now. So kind of a scary defensive situation that secondary was suspect last year. They needed to sure that up. And Michigan has some real deal wide receivers that they could potentially exploit that. But overall, Zook, I'm super heavy on the St. Louis Battlehawks here, and I don't think it's going to be close. Good value at six and a half. Um, I, I would lean over here as well. But we're scared of those in week one. Uh, obviously, this league with its rules cater to the over with the three-point conversions as well as the uh, alternate onside kick. Who you got in this one, Zook? I also have St. Louis. I, well, one for one. We agree. There. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you're right. If I'm going to lean, I'm liking that over too. I'm, it's not a best bet of mine because I don't like yeah. totals. I really don't. Uh, but it's, it's definitely – you would think week one defenses might be a little slow. How much yeah. tackling have they really been done doing? And uh, that St. Louis offense is nasty. So Yeah, th this scares me with St. Louis as potentially the team that comes out in week one, and we know already who the champ's going to be. Uh, they are going to make a statement. They, they put up 53 last time they were on a field. The defense was not good. But you give AJ another year with Bruce, and you get some defensive players like that. St. Louis is going to start 4-0, and then they're going to go to D.C. and lose. 